It's amazing. As the Lord would ask his disciples, or ask all his children, the children of Israel, but they would have to wake up at 5 in the morning and go out and pick up manna. This was fresh dew from heaven. Let's look at this, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to get this. 5 o'clock in the morning, they would get up and pick up fresh manna from heaven. That relationship, that time that he had with his people was very special. He didn't make it 3 o'clock in the afternoon where it was convenient. <laughs> or noon where teenagers get up. But he made it five, that early morning experience that caused the church to have to get up and to receive fresh manna from heaven. What did they receive when they got that? Food. And they'd be thanking the Lord for yes. fresh manna from heaven. What's your manna today? I've learned in my life if I snooze, I lose. God says, get up, and my body wants to negotiate with the Holy Ghost, you lose. You don't sit there and say, God, I'm going to meet you. You just wait, I'll be up in 30 more minutes. Then you lose the opportunity of the fertileness, of the anointing, of the freshness of God when it's at its most precious time, where He has made intimate time with you. And if you're not willing to spend that time with God, then He cannot be intimate, He cannot be fresh, He cannot be loving and caring and kind the way you want Him to, because you're not up to receive it. It's a practice that has to be practiced for the church today. So mm. the church is able to let the Lord know what your intentions are. See, He teaches you how to hold on, and that's when you get up in the morning and pray. You get to hold on for the rest of the day. Or maybe you'll stay up late at night, and that's protecting you for the evening and ready for the morning day that may come. The Lord really, really appreciates you understanding that as you, we go to Philippians, and I just read that you're going to see that he keep, just keeps saying always in every prayer, I'll remember you. This is the third scripture that I brought to your attention, helping you to understand that in the church's responsibility, it's always to remember one to another, one over another, and making sure that that one is taken care of in prayer or with love or whatever concerns that they may go through. 2 Timothy 1.1. 1, 1. If you're looking that up, I can turn to that real quick and show you something. Paul, Apostle of Christ Jesus, by the word of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace and mercy and peace from God, the Father of Christ Jesus Christ the Lord. I thank God who I serve as my forefather did with a clear conscience at night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayer. You can go on to read, as it says, recall in your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Folks, the love that he had for the church, Kevin, was just so unbelievable. He loved them so much he couldn't, couldn't stop praying for the churches, all seven of them. But as I picked these scripture out and found out that he kept saying that I may remember you. Never forget him because I love you. And recalling your tears and knowing the heartaches and the pain that you may go through. I long to see you. I have been reminded of your sincere faith. And he continued to go on to make sure that they understand that what he's doing is want to let them know that when he sends Timothy, his son he calls him, that Timothy begins to bring out, he says, he will bring to you what I have taught him, the love of Christ. He will bring to you what I have shared with him and what I prayed over him about, the impartation of what you long for. It's important to understand that God is wanting to make sure today that as you are being remembered, you are going to reap the benefits of the blessing of that prayer. That prayer is for you to understand that is your life support to face situations or whatever that may come across to you this day. And that prayer is the power that hits circumstances right in the face and allows circumstances to be pushed back so it will not interfere with your faith, your motives, and your calling. As you think about that today, it's important for you to understand that the devil is always trying to do this. 
not just trying to resist your prayers, the Lord has showed me, but the devil is trying to bump you out of the circle of spending fertile time with God. And if he can get to bump you out of that time, that you have cheated yourself because of busyness or whatever it is, he has won you over and is able to defeat you with thoughts that are not of God and with weariness and, and whatever may come your way. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell the church, it is time to always remember that what is important is do not let the devil bump you out of that fertile time. Can you say amen? amen. That time that has already been set aside with God as the disciples or as the prophets of old would do so to make sacrifices. This is the sacrifice that God is asking you to do for the church in the last days to make that time so your circle will not be bumped out of what God wants to spend time with you. That was trying to rob you of that, that precious tender time. He's trying to rob you of that anointing. The devil is trying to rob you of that sacredness. And the Lord showed me this. He said, now he's trying to rob the church of its meanfulness. Now it doesn't mean anything anymore because you didn't get up and pray. Okay? Now prayer doesn't mean anything to you because you're not praying. See how easy it is? I'll get it later. It's lost its purpose. It's lost its power. It's lost its love. It's care. So God speaks to us today. When the devil is trying to break your back, trying to stop you from praying, You must understand the devil is always trying to take something away from you that God has already given you. If he can stop you from praying, he can stop you from loving your family, your friends, your church, and your God. So the devil knows where to hit the church if the church is not praying. If the church stops praying, he's won. Because the power is in the prayer of God's people who humble himself and pray and seek the face of God. He not only heals lands, but he heals everything that you have and takes care of your future. In closing, it's important for us to understand that we can bring the meaningfulness back to the church by praying together today. And asking God, if you could use anybody, would you use me? You're the man. The purpose is you fulfill the calling of what God's called you to. And life is hard because we seem like we get knocked off our feet, but the strength of a person is how fast they get up. I like that little sign in the exercise in the room when we were praying. An, op an optimist may complain about it a storm, or a wave, or a wind. But I tell you, someone with the right attitude, they'll just turn the sail and go whatever direction they need to go to get to where they need to be. I said, well, this is important for the church to understand. And we just lift our hands and see which way the Lord is blowing us to go to where he wants us to go. Lord, I just raise my hands and surrender. You, with that rushing mighty wind, take me where I need to go. And I'll stop complaining. You know, I'll allow God to have his way in my life. I'm just going to hang on. And allow you to be what you want me to be. How much do you need from God? As I ask you this question before we come. What do I need from God today? You need to spend more time with God. We haven't come to be a visitor. We're family. And sometimes we go to God and we think, remember me? Of course he remembers you. But today we get to come together corporately and say, okay, Pastor, we're going to pray today. But I know I've been going through some tough times. But I'm going to pray that I'm able to do what God wants me to do and not so worry about what I need to do. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 I got to get out there and do what he called me to do the day I was born. Amen. 